With the elements attributes file open, let's switch to the define element attributes model. This is where we are going to take a look at how to define element attributes. Element attributes are the unique characteristics that define an element and what are used to make them different from other elements. Common element attributes include level, color, line type, line weight, transparency, and display priority. All of these are set in the attributes toolbox. I am just going to cover the basics, and if you want to know more about the other element attributes not covered in this section, then go to the help menu and do a keyword search for element attributes, and MicroStation will list a variety of results to help you dig deeper into this. The attributes toolbox is the first toolbox under the main menu bar. And like we discussed previously, this is where you can change the look and feel of elements. Let's work our way across the attributes toolbox to get you familiar with the most common tools before blazing through a bunch of modifications to get you comfortable with defining attributes. The active level is the level that new elements will be placed. You can change the active level in the attributes toolbox by selecting a level from the list of available levels. Go ahead and select the active level button. As you can see, you have a list of levels to choose from. Now select anywhere in the view window with a mouse pointer to exit out of the active level dialog. Active color specifies the color that a new element will be placed. When you select the color tool in the attributes toolbox, you will see a dialog that has three tabs indexed, true color, and color book. The first tab is the index color tab. It lets you select a color from a table of 256 colors. These colors are not named and are identified by a number. As you hover the mouse pointer over any of the colors, MicroStation will show a quick preview of the color number and its respective true color values. The second tab lets you select a color based on a true color values. If you know a specific RGB value that you want to use, you can enter in those respective values in the RGB fields in the lower portion of the true color dialog, or you can select anywhere within the color palette to select a desired color. The third tab is the color book. Color books are used to contain a collection of named true RGB colors. When a color from a book is assigned to an element, the book and color name are stored in the element, so it's easy to see what you have selected. There is a fourth tab that isn't common and is only available when using a tool that creates a closed element, because it can be filled with a color. The active line style is the line style that new elements will be placed. MicroStation has two classification of line styles. The eight standard line styles are numbered zero through seven. There are also custom line styles for railroad, gas line, and ground line to name a few. The standard line styles range from solid to dot dash combinations. These lines are cosmetic and are defined in screen units, which means they do not change in size when you zoom in or zoom out, so no scale is associated with them. Custom lines are defined in design units. These line styles are physical and are scalable. They become larger or smaller when you zoom in or zoom out. In this CAD Manager's tip, I'm going to go over how to change line style scale within model properties. There are a few different ways to adjust the scale size of a line style. So I'm going to show you the most common and probably easiest way to consistent scale between all custom line styles within your design. Continuing in the elements attributes file, let's focus on the lines I have already drawn for you. Let's focus on the top two lines on the left. Now zoom in and zoom out a little. Notice that the lines didn't change in size, 
Again, standard line styles are defined in screen units and will not change size when zooming in and out. Now let's focus on the bottom two lines and again zoom in and zoom out. As you can see, the line styles get bigger and smaller depending on your zoom level, and this is due to custom line styles being defined in design units. Now that we have that down, let's change the scale of line styles so we can resize lines as needed per design requirements. The easiest way is to go to Models. Once the Models dialog appears, go to Properties. Now in the Models Properties dialog, go to Annotation Scale option and select 1 of 5 from the list, and then hit OK. Once you hit OK, you will notice that the custom line style scaled up really big. Let's go ahead and change it back to 1 to 1 to get line style scales to original size. As you become familiar with MicroStation and start setting up sheets, you will start to get the hang of knowing which scale to use that will look really good with your different sheets. This concludes this CAD Manager's tip in learning how to control the scale of custom line styles via model properties. Now back to the demo. The active line weight specifies the line weight that new elements will be placed. The active line weight is a value between 0 through 31 that is assigned to an element to define its thickness. MicroStation line weights are defined in screen units and remain static as the zoom factor changes. Transparency is an element attribute that can be set for elements in the Attributes Toolbox too. Set transparency from elements from 0, which is fully visible, to 100, which is not visible. Let's select the white rectangle and then go to the Transparency tool. Now select 80 from the Transparency Tool dialog and then select anywhere in the view to deselect the block. As you can see, the white block is transparent by 80% and the hidden text that was behind the block is now readable. The display of element transparency in a view is controlled by the View Attributes dialog and it can be controlled by Element Information and Level Manager too. Display Priority is another element attribute that can be set in the Attribute Toolbox. Display Priority is a preset value that determines how an element is displayed relative to other elements. The elements with the highest value are placed in front while those with lower priorities are placed in the back. Now let's see the Display Priority tool in action. As you can see on the right, the blue circle is behind the red block. So let's use the Display Priority tool to bring the blue circle in front of the red block. Go ahead and select the blue circle. Now select the Display Priority tool. From the Display Priority dialog, select 300 from the list and then select anywhere within the view window to deselect the blue circle. As you can see, the blue circle is now in front of the red block. Element priority is only available in 2D models. Priority is for 2D since priority corresponds to the Z value in a 3D model. Also, rather than placing design elements within the active elements attributes, you can place them with symbology settings inherited from attributes defined in a level. This is called bi-level symbology. Placing elements in the design file with bi-level symbology requires the active color, weight, and style be set to bi-level in the attributes toolbox. To set the active color, weight, or style to bi-level, select the bi-level option within the active color, active weight, and active styles tool. Now as you place new elements, they will be placed on the correct bi-level attributes based on the level settings. This concludes how to define element attributes. See you in the next video.